In less than a month, April 8th to be specific, a total solar eclipse will soar over Texas. It's a one of a kind of experience. It's a one of a kind experience. There we go. We rarely see, but there are ways to safely view the eclipse. Meteorologist Anthony Yanez spoke with Kelly Beatty of Sky and Telescope about ways to watch the eclipse and how to take the best photos. Let's take a listen. Uh, Kelly, first of all, uh, viewing the sun during a uh, partial eclipse, total eclipse, or on any other regular regular day, you got to do it safely. How do we do that? Yeah, you know, Anthony, whenever you're looking at the sun, whether it's full sun or 95% coverage, it's still dangerous. And so you need special glasses, special filters that will allow you to see the sun safely. Now, you've probably thought, well, maybe I can use my sun. No, sunglasses or Pop-Tart wrappers, don't use those. You need something like this. They're, they're uh, specially made glass with uh, special filters in them that block one part, all but one part in 100,000 of the sun's light. Now, these, these eyeglasses are popular, but I have to say, my preference is a little card that looks like this. It's a three by five card. You can punch a hole in the corner and hang it around your neck. I, I, I like that because it's actually big enough to cover, let's say you wanna use binoculars or your smartphone or something like that. You must use a filter during those partial phases uh, when the sun's partly covered to protect your eyes, your optics, whatever you might be using. So, you know, that's that's one thing. I know people are going to want to try to take pictures, you, you, as, especially if you're if you're in Houston and you're going to see, you know, all but 6% of the sun covered. You still need the filter. You can use one of these over the front of your smartphone. The other uh, accessory, if you can put your phone on a tripod for stability, that would be best, right? Because that will give you the most stable view. And I would highly recommend that you get one of these. It's a little uh, Bluetooth remote that you can buy at Walmart or online for like 10 bucks. And that way you can take pictures without touching your phone. It'll guarantee that you'll have the steadiest image and uh, and the safest image too. Uh, you mentioned taking pictures and I know uh, when I get, uh, people always send these pictures in and they sh uh, show, show us the pictures they took, for example, the annular eclipse that was happening last October and they're from their cell phone and they're the world's worst pictures and they're just yeah. so bad. Uh, and so for me, I love the experience. I don't take any pictures. If I do any video, I actually videotape people's reactions because I love the oohs and the ahs and the emotions that are captured there. But I never take pictures because I have a cell phone. I don't have a good camera. And so what do you recommend if you really do want to have a memory that is the image that you see? What should we do? Yeah, so if you really are invested in trying to get a good picture of the eclipse, your smartphone is not the best camera. They are great, and if you're if you're if you're going to commit to using your smartphone, then for for one thing, buy a, an adapter that will allow you to put it on a tripod so it can be rock steady. Okay. Then the other thing I would do, in addition to getting the little uh, the little uh, uh, remote adapter there, there's a there's a, a very very economical uh, package called Solar Snap. Solar Snap. You can buy it online on Amazon for like uh, 17, 20 bucks. It comes with some filters for your phone, and it also comes with an app that w you can use to you know control your phone. You, 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 if you think about it, we we let our phones do all the work for us, right? But for something like an eclipse, you want to be able to control the zoom, the focus, the the amount of the exposure, and Solar Snap. This app does a great job of that. So if you're if you're if that's what you're using your your smartphone, that's what I'd suggest. If you're using a higher end camera, something with a lens, you know, a long lens, uh, for you photographers out there. At, uh, ideally, you want a, a lens with like three or 400 millimeters of focal length, and you will need a filter for the front of that lens too, for the partial phases. But whatever you're using, if you're viewing totality, this is really important, you can take off the filters during the middle of totality when the sun is completely covered and see it all by eye. Uh, you mentioning uh, seeing it all by eye. I, something that, that was fascinating that I learned w w actually from you when, when you were first talking about, hey, there's these solar eclipses that are coming, uh, was the theory of general relativity. Einstein's theory of general relativity. Tell me that story. 
All right. So when Einstein came up with that in 1915, it predicted that gravity can bend light. And so the question is, how do you prove that? Well, it turns out that the sun has a lot of gravity. And so if you could imagine looking at the stars that are behind the sun in the distance, very close to it, general relativity would predict that the stars will be bent into a position that's not where they would ordinarily be. It's a very small, but very measurable. The problem is the sun is so bright. So in 1919, there was a total solar eclipse and an astronomer named Arthur Eddington actually did photographs during totality to record the background stars. And in fact, it, he was able to prove that the stars were in had been bent into a new position in the sky that that matched what general relativity would have predicted. And it was a triumphant proof of that uh, important theory. And, and what's incredible about that, that took Einstein's status from being basically uh, a famous scientist to just legendary uh, status by being able to know that and then to have it proved just a few years later is just uh, truly incredible, remarkable. Uh, Kelly, is there anything else uh, you would like to say about the eclipse coming up on April 8th? Well, you know, people will have a lot of questions, and, and you and I can only cover so much. Uh, let me give you two websites where you can go to that I can guarantee the information is good. The first is my magazines, skyandtelescope.org, which has a great portal there with all kinds of maps and such. And the other, even better, would be eclipse.aas.org. That's for the American Astronomical Society. There you'll see all kinds of information on how to view the eclipse, how to order filters, what to do, what you'll see, and I can highly re recommend both of those. Yeah, and a, a lot of the things that we talked about today are in that uh, Sky and Telescope magazine. Uh, it's not that expensive, but you get uh, two free uh, solar eclipse glasses that come with it. So I have That's that. Right. all of the information, a lot of the stuff I learn, I get straight from you and that magazine. So thank you so much uh, for providing that and for providing uh, the information. So looking forward to it. And uh, thank you so much uh, for your time, Kelly. Oh, clear skies to you, Anthony. We hope we all have clear skies on Eclipse Day and uh, we all get to see that spectacle. That is the hope. Thanks again for your time.